You guys want to see something absolutely fucking sick? Look at that! Oh my god! That entire functionality is encoded in that. Yes! Oh man, that feels good. That was so easy to write as well. Got a double whammy there, wow. So that right there, boop. I would say we've pretty much got the harvesting loop down pat now because there's a chance that the seed will duplicate, which is kind of like pretty much the whole game. Grow plant, harvest plant, destroy dead plant, seed pop out, maybe seed duplicate, now have two plants. So now I've got to work on the next part of gameplay, which is actually taking the resources that you get from the plants over here. Uh, it's broken at the moment, but they spawn these things, right? So now I've got to take this and basically have a way of combining them and building up to the next tier of plant. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna go work on now. Man, it feels good to be back in gameplay mode, baby. Hello, it's me again a couple hours later. This is absolutely huge. Remember yesterday when I said you'll have to wait until I have a good example for memory arenas to show you? Well, I've made a little upgrade to the coroutines and have added local state. What does that mean? Now, in every single coroutine, we can just have a little structure here with a bunch of variables to hang on to. And now with the power of memory arenas and the frame arena, ooh, we can basically call malloc, right? <laughs> Onto that frame arena, and we can get this state dynamically right here. And what I'm storing right now is just an offset. It's pretty much the current offset of the Pokeball thing, right? And we just stuff that into the render offset. But this hangs around every single time we enter in here and it persists. It's pretty much like, you know how in C, C++, you can define a variable to be static and it basically locally persists each time you go into it. This is like the good version of that. <laughs> and it's re-entrance, so it can happen for absolutely everything. I think my comment kind of sums it up here, but this is absolutely massive. Instead of having this, right, and then having to go over to the entities and like, all right, well, now we need some logic so we can like, you know, type out a variable in here and now we're hanging onto it in here. Um, but in reality, this is the only place that we actually access that variable. The, this is the only place we actually need it. Um, it's just polluting the entity structure, which is already pretty massive and needs stuff, right? And the whole reason that this works with the frame arena, because you're probably thinking, well, if we go across to the next frame, then aren't, doesn't that frame arena just get reset and expire? Like now you've just got a dangling pointer into invalid memory. Oh no, not quite, Bucker. Well, I've done a little trick called double buffering the frame arena. So we've got two arenas here and we actually hang on to the last frame as well. At the start of each frame, we literally swap the frame arenas and we clear the current one. So you can kind of imagine like we're putting all this data into the frame arena and we're storing a pointer to that data. But now when the next frame comes along, we don't want that pointer to go die. We still want to be pointing there. So this new frame arena, instead of overriding the old frame arena, we basically swap it out and then the new frame we reset, we clear, we write into, but the old frame still hangs around. So all of our pointers to that data exist and we're good. And it's a perfect utopia of localized state. That is actually amazing. I think I'm really starting to get the hang of this whole memory arena thing. Man, I just realized I keep scope creeping, not on the game, but on these videos. Look at the last couple too, for example. They're banging. They've got music, they've got good vibes, but it took me seven hours to edit them yesterday. <laughs> oh, it's tricky. All right, I need to set some hard constraints. Some, like a hard constraint of like one hour worth of editing every single day. I can't go over that. And then I work within those constraints to get a video done to the best of my ability. Because if I keep leaving it open-ended and I keep recording all this footage, like for example today, I've recorded so much footage already, the longer it takes to edit. Like when I first set out to do this series, it was like, okay, game dev first, entertainment and updating people second. Recently, it's kind of swapped to like updating and entertainment a bit more than I'd like. The videos are just scope creeping. 
From this point onwards, and I'm probably gonna forget again because it's something I've just gotta keep reminding myself over and over again, these videos are not gonna be entertaining. I'm not trying to be entertaining. I'm trying to document what I'm working on and the reality of it, that is, it's just fucking boring sometimes and it's full of head scratching, it's full of me not knowing what the fuck to do. It's full of entire days where I just sit around kind of questioning my entire existence. And that's just life. Um, and I'm gonna bring you on those, the good and the bad days, because when I'm trying to be entertaining, it's like a pressure to only have good days almost, which paradoxically just makes them bad. I really gotta get this game done quickly and like do all this gameplay stuff and blah, 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 progress, progress, progress. It's literally just me thinking I need to make progress for the sake of a YouTube video, which is the whole reason why I quit YouTube in the first place. It's the whole thing I did not wanna get caught up when I returned to YouTube. So I'm just making sure I stay reminded. Um, and honestly, I'm just gonna end the video right here and we'll pick this back up tomorrow. I'm gonna go get some work done. I'm gonna go do a bit of mining off camera. <laughs>